Hello everybody and welcome back to Southeast by Midwest. I'm Cassie and today we're doing 2017 beauty favorites. If you want to know what all were my favorites for 2017, just keep watching. Before we jump in, we disclose, and the disclosure for this is that yes, some of these were previously sent to me as PR, however, it does not affect them being included in this. There were no deals struck about that or anything. It is just because I used them, I really did like them using them throughout the year. I also want to disclose how I'm doing it this year and how I'm going to be doing it next year. So for this year, these are not necessarily products that are new in 2017. These are products that I liked throughout 2017. So these may be old products. They may be fairly new products. Uh, you know, it's just a mixed bag of things that I used. For each category, there will be a drugstore favorite and a high-end favorite, except there are some cases where I was not able to pick a drugstore favorite, i.e. color correctors. I did not try any color correctors in the drugstore, so I couldn't even give you one that I had tried. Now, as for 2018, the way that I'm thinking about doing this is that I'm wanting to put up a favorites video for every month, and that will be five products each month. And what I'm hoping to do is for my 2018 favorites to pick at least like one product from each month or something like that. But basically my 2018 favorites can only come from the monthly favorites is what I'm thinking about doing. We'll have to see how it works. So let's go on ahead and jump in. First products that I'm going to start with are prep sprays. And for prep sprays for the drugstore, it is the mix, uh, the Pixie Hydrating Milky Mist. I love this. And as you can see, it is a quarter of the way down. The only reason it is not further down than this is because this was in the room where the ceiling collapsed in 2017. And it got trapped in there for a while and I could not get to it. So I've only recently been able to get back into it and that's how much I used in the little bit of time I had it before it kind of disappeared. And then since getting it back literally two days ago. So love this stuff. It is super hydrating. It has hyaluronic acid which makes the skin look even more hydrated. I really, really do like this. For high end, we have the Smashbox Primer Water. And this basically, you, I just spray it on before I put on my primer, let it soak in, pat it in, and it kind of does the same thing, but I find it is not quite as hydrating as the Pixi Milky Mist. So if my skin's feeling extra dehydrated, I will go with the Pixi, and if my skin's feeling all right hydrated, I'll probably grab for the Smashbox. Next, we have primers, and for drugstore, it is the Pixi flawless and poreless. I love this primer. It um, minimizes the pores, but it also hydrates at the same time. So I really, really enjoy that. I find that it works a little bit better, well, it works way better for me than like the Benefit um, Poreffessional does. For a high end, it is the, you've seen this before probably, the NARS Radiance Enhancing Pro Prime. I believe, or at least used to, only could be able to get this at Sephora. And I absolutely love this. It does a good job of filling in my pores, it primes my face, but it also gives a glow. So on days that I'm wanting to look extra dewy, radiant, all that kind of stuff, this is what I reach for. All right. For foundations, coming in at the end of the year was the Neutrogena Healthy Skin Foundation. Now, I have quite a few drugstore foundations, just however, this year, the ones that I tried just did not work for me. They either oxidized, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, of course, I love the CoverGirl um, 3M1. However, I didn't use that last year because I was trying to find new foundations, so I couldn't include it. However, on New Year's Eve, I did try this and I loved it, so it literally came in at the last second to save the drugstore foundation category for me. And High End, on the other hand, had quite a few competitors. We had the Dior Forever Foundation, which is what ultimately won, but I also had like the IT Cosmetics Powder Foundation. I loved the IT Cosmetics uh, CC Plus, the illuminating one, 
which I loved my Jouer foundation um, the uh, the skin tint that comes in the plastic bottle not the new glass one but ultimately this is the one that I reach for more and that I really really enjoy plus it cost me a pretty penny oh forgot color correctors because I use color corrector I'm doing this in like kind of the order that I do everything in and I color correct before I found it before I put on foundation and there was not a drugstore one because like I said I didn't try any but for high-end it is the Urban Decay uh, color correcting fluid the skin concealer in pink as you can see I've used quite a bit I literally use this all the time under my eyes because my dark circles are outrageous unruly and it's not because I don't get sleep I do it's just I have naturally dark under eye circles and really this is the only thing that helps cover them. Alright now for concealer we have in the drugstore the Maybelline Fit Me concealer in I believe this is 15 Fair. I heard a lot of great things about this so at about midway through 2017 I went on ahead got it from Ulta and loved it. In high end because I was using that so often Really, the only two concealers that I used in the high end were the Benefit Fake Up, which is the one where it's got the concealer in the middle and the hydrating core on the outside. And as you can tell, I still have the old packaging. And the Urban Decay um, concealer, the skin concealer. And out of the two of those, this is the one that I prefer the most. I find that while the color corrector works well for me, the concealer actually causes like a little bit of creasing under my eye for the Urban Decay. Whereas this one does not do that and because it has that hydrating like outer ring part, it actually hydrates my under eye as I'm concealing so I really really like that. Alright, for setting powders we have the Cody Air Spun Powder in Translucent for Drugstore and the Laura Mercier Setting Powder in Translucent for High End. In all honesty, I don't use setting powders that often just because they tend to make my skin look dry and cakey. I actually tend to use, which I don't have it in here, um, like the MAC face powders that have like a little bit of uh, shimmer to it, like I have the Trolls one. I tend to use those because they set my face, but they don't dry it out, whereas these tend to. Now I do use these for under eyes and it really depends on how dry my under eye is looking. If my under eye is looking like super duper dry, then usually I go for the Laura Mercier. If it's not looking that dry, I go for the Cody. I find the Cody dries me out a little more. It may not be the same for everyone, but for me that's how it works. Alright, for the contour bronzing kind of situation, I don't do it a lot, either one, just because um, the way that my complexion is, it just really looks like dirt streaks. It does not and I think part of that is also because I have fat cheeks so it's not really looking like sunken it's just looking like dirt so the elf little four pan palettes I did a videos or blog posts on these really enjoyed these I have the blush the highlight and the contour and in all honesty I would have put this in each category <laughs> I did put it in the highlight and the contour but these honestly I loved them from the drugstore and like I said because I don't contour or bronze that often I don't really um, didn't really use a lot. Now the Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer that everyone loves, I purchased it part of the way through 2017, but I put it somewhere to review it and then completely lost it and didn't find it until the other day. And I haven't used it yet still, so I can't tell you what it is, whether I like it or not. But from what I did try, these were the ones that I liked. It had different colors and all that jazz and it has a really nice mirror. Plus I believe these pop out so you can customize your palette. Now in high end, I did use quite a few. Um, I did use like the Benefit uh, Hula. I have the Cheek Parade palette back here which has Hula Light in it but I haven't used it. I got the Hula Stick. I mean I, I got a lot of things I just didn't try them. There were a few I tried and now the ones that I tried the Marc Jacobs Omega Bronzer in 102 Tantric is the one that I really like the most for that kind of around the perimeter kind of thing. For blush in the drugstore, like I said, I didn't want to use the e.l.f., so I went to another uh, drugstore blush that I tend to go to, which is the Milani Baked Blush in Dulce Pink. I've had this for a while. 
I did a blog post on this before I, I believe before I even had my YouTube channel. So really enjoy these. They are super, super pigmented. And the high end, again, I tried a lot of blushes. The Benefit um, box blushes are my favorite with the dandelion being the favorite. I just really love the color. I did a, I believe a whole video on the Benefit Dandelion set series. So. For highlight, again, for the drugstore, like I said before, it is the e.l.f. 4-Pan Illuminating Palette. It's supposed to be kind of like the Hourglass Ambient Powders, I believe. But I haven't tried those, so I can't tell you or not. But I know that I did like this. And it is one of the only drugstore highlights that I used in 2017. Not that I purchased, but that I used. Now, in high-end, again, that is not the case. Um, I was torn between the Smashbox, which is what I went with, Casey Holmes palette, and the Benefit Dandelion highlighter. But because I chose the Benefit Dandelion blush, I felt like I needed to go with something else for the highlight. And I really did like these. The pearls are just kind of a more um, natural looking highlight for me. For drugstore, it is the Studio Gear Invincible Gel Eyeliner in Earth. I found that I actually wasn't using eyeliner at all just because it's so hard for me to apply without my glasses on just because when I'm looking, I'm right handed and if I do it with my left hand, it gets squiggly. So I have to do it with my right hand. And doing this side is fine, but then doing this side, it just, it gets complicated. So I found that this actually is what got me on to using eyeliner again because this gel eyeliner is amazing. It applies wonderfully and I just loved it. I then found the Tarte Amazonian Clay Dual Liner on Outlook and decided to give it a try since I was getting into it. And I really enjoyed this one in black and bronze. The black is, um, again, amazing, applies beautifully. My only problem with this one is it does not dry as fast as the Studio Gear. It stays wet for a long time, so it transfers a lot. But out of the other gel liners that I tried in high end, this one was the best. For eye primer, it is the MAC Painterly Paint Pot. This is literally all I used for all uh, eye primer all year. I did not use any other high end. I did not use any other drugstore. So I really can't give you any other options because this is what I use. For eyeshadow in the drugstore, I chose the 24K Nudes. I know that not everybody liked these, but I actually did like this little eyeshadow palette. I felt like the colors were really pigmented. They were a little dusty, but not horrible. I mean, I've had higher end palettes that were more dusty, like this one. <laughs> but I felt like I was able to get some good looks with this and I really enjoyed it. The high end for eyeshadow palettes is the Too Faced Natural Matte. I know this is an older palette, but it is one that I reach for all the time. You can actually really see that. I mean, I, you can see the divots in several of these. I use this for bringing in just kind of neutral shades into other eyeshadow palettes. I use this on its own when I just wanted a, just a kind of natural makeup. If I wasn't wearing makeup, but I wanted to make my eyes just look a little more awake and stuff, I went for this palette. And I also use it a lot to fill in my brows. So well loved and will continue to be well loved. For brows in the drugstore, I liked the L'Oreal Brow Stylist. I was sent these, which is a good thing because they never appeared in my store, but I really do like them. It has a kind of a wax over here and a powder over here. I never really used the wax, but I did use the powder and I loved it. It also came with like the smallest brush and spoolie and the littlest pair of tweezers that you ever did see in your life. And I didn't use those. I used them with just a regular brush and a spoolie but I liked this from the drugstore. And for our high end, of course, it is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Gel in Clear. I use just a spoolie brush that I then cleanse afterwards. And so I will fill in my brows and then I'll dip it in and take this over both brows just as a setter. So I love this.
for mascara in the drugstore, it was the Maybelline Colossal Big Shot. Loved this mascara. Um, a good second place mascara was the L'Oreal Lash Paradise. I loved that one especially more than the Too Faced Better Than Sex mascara. But ultimately this one out just because I love what it did for my lashes a little more than the L'Oreal Lash Paradise. And for high end, I went with the Marc Jacobs um, Omega Vo Lash Volumizing Mascara in 30 Blacker. With high end mascaras, I did not buy any new ones this year. All I used were the samples. And out of the samples, the Smart Jacobs was the one that, you know, lasted the longest on my lashes without breaking down. So for drugstore, the Mario Badescu facial spray with aloe, herbs, and rose water was But this just does a good job. It's got a nice light mist. And of course for high end, it has to be the MAC Fix Plus for me. That may change for 2018 as I do now have the Tatcha Luminous Spray. But for right now, it is the MAC Fix Plus. Love this. You can tell it's been well used. I also have the trio of the MAC Fix Plus that was the lavender, the rose, and the coconut that for the holidays. I just haven't had a chance to use it. So those will also be in the running for 2018. For lipsticks for the drugstore, it is the Pixi Matte Luster Lipsticks. I loved these. Wore them several times after receiving them. This shade is Bitten Rose. They last a long time on the skin, but they're also nourishing as well. They're not drying. This shade is Rose Natural. Natural. And then the last shade is Peach Blossom. They have some amazing shades. Like I said, they last a while. They are kind of a matte, but they're not transfer proof, but they feel comfortable on the skin. Really enjoyed these. For high end, it would definitely be the Bite Beauty Amuse Beauche lipsticks. Um, before I picked like the MAC lipsticks, but for some reason, they just don't last on my lips as much anymore. And they, Lipsticks have a tendency to make my lips like crack in the inner part and I find that if that's going to happen I'd really prefer it to be a lipstick that's not toxic and these are I believe like food grade. So this is the shade Pepper Beetroot. These are a little stiffer than the um, Pixie ones. The Pixie ones are a, you know still a little creamier and this is Gaspaccio. I actually post about these three in a video, I don't know if it was, I believe it's 2016, but I still use them. This will be so, there we go. So, really, really enjoyed those. I don't have the drugstore ones with me. One, I believe, is in a bag somewhere, and the other one is in a room somewhere. I tried to find them, I couldn't find them, but um, first place for that one goes to the Maybelline. 24 hour stay, you know, the one with white cap and then the solid bottom cap. I have the shade, I believe, Dreamer and Voyager. I know for sure I have. And those things stay put. If you are wanting a long lasting liquid lipstick and you're not wanting to break the bank on it, those Maybelline liquid lips are it. Uh, my only issue with them is that they do tend to make my, because my lips are dry, even when I prep them beforehand, they can make my lips look even drier. So for a second place, this Neutrogena Hydra Boost, and this is in Velvet Wine. I had an, another shade earlier in the year that I really enjoyed, which was a pinky shade. Really, really great. Love, the, love it. It is hydrating and it lasts a while. And for high end, it is the Stila Stay All Day Liquid Lipsticks in Bella. I tried quite a few high end liquid lippies and these are just so pigmented they stay they're comfortable they don't make my lips look dry amazing those were my 2017 uh beauty favorites hopefully you enjoyed it if you did make sure to give it a thumbs up share it with all your friends it really does help make sure to follow me on the social media link down below and make sure to subscribe to the newsletter so you don't miss anything each week make sure to subscribe to the youtube channel and hit that notification button so you don't miss any videos because i'm going to try to put up at least three a week don't know we're going to try though and make sure to leave me a comment down below telling me what your favorite beauty item from 2017 was and until next time bye